definitely dropping out of school. So that's my formal announcement. I'm dropping out of college. Um, it was fun though. It was fun though while it lasted. I really enjoyed um, doing financial accounting. Just kidding guys. Uh, so today is going to be just as normal as any of my other videos. Today we're going to be talking about... Today we're going to be talking about how to handle the end of the semester. This is a video that I honestly wish I had. There are so many of these videos out on YouTube that are just really flaky and they're like, love yourself. And it's like, yeah, that's great. Like loving yourself is a very good fundamental concept to have and a good value and everything, but it's just like, it, how do you actually handle the end of the semester? Because I'm still waiting to find out. Nonetheless, I do have a few things that I've learned just now that I'm finishing up my third semester of college. Um, and I wanted to share them with you guys because I know that the end of the semester is really scary. The first thing is to get real good at planning. And um, obviously this isn't something that's learned overnight. But I find that as you move on through the semester, you start relying a little bit more on your memory than your planner to get you through the day. And that's not necessarily a great habit to have, especially if you're trying to develop a good habit of being a planner, or that's just not one of the best ways to do it. Something that I find that really helps is setting like a certain time during the day that you always check in on your calendar. And I personally, so I created a new subsection. I personally use iCal. Um, you can do the same exact thing in Google Calendar, you can do it with a pen and pencil if you're old school yee yee like some of us are, and, but try to buy like a different highlighter color or just create a different calendar in your online one that is specifically used for your school tasks. So mine, for example, on my calendar, it's this lavender kind of color. I will just put in like if I know that I have a geology lab or a write up that's going to take me roughly an hour to do, I block out 3 to 4 p.m geology write up. I usually will give myself some kind of reward like a cup of coffee or like some sweets or something like that if I get it done within that time frame. Um, but it is a really good way to gauge and figure out how much time you actually need to do things. I recommend trying that out if you guys haven't already. Just doing time blocking, not just for your classes and meetings and work and things like that, but actually for your physical assignments, it is such a good way to push yourself through the end of the semester because it makes it feel more like a game in a sense. You're kind of like always reaching for some goal and it's really, really handy. Number two is that checklists are your best friend. Um, I didn't want to, I wanted to do a separate video kind of announcing this, but we're just, me and you, it's going to be your little secret, but studying abroad this summer. But yes, I am studying abroad this summer and one of the things about study abroad is there are like three websites with their own set of checklists that you have to keep on top of. Like it's truly boggling how many little tasks you have to micromanage just to be prepared to go on study abroad. So personally, I took all of this information, I sat down one afternoon and I was like, we are just going to make a checklist of every single thing that needs to happen. I'm like not even stressed about study abroad. Like literally just physically writing out those tasks and knowing what needed to happen when was enough to get it off my mind and more focused on my classes. <sighs> Sorry guys, I don't know why I'm struggling to talk so much today. <laughs> okay. Plus it's really cool when you make a checklist for everything remaining in the semester for like each of your classes or whatever and you are just like, it's like the last day of class, you're about to go take your final for it and you just get to check that bad boy right off the list when you're done. It is so satisfying. There is also this app that I'm going to show you guys and it's called Grades. And I personally have been using it on my desktop, so I don't have it updated to my phone. But it's a really cool little app here. You've got, you can list out your classes that you're taking this semester. Just enter in the grade weights, so it'll help you create targets and goals to get the grade that you want on the next assignment. It's literally the most brilliant thing ever, and I wish that I had discovered it earlier because it would have been so stinking helpful. So number three though, and this one goes to the checklist thing, is take it one 
step at a time. If you prefer to do the multiple checklist things, if you like to do little boxes with like priorities or whatever, just experiment and see what goes well for you. I actually did a workshop with some of my mentees in the Macomb Success Scholars program about different kinds of checklists and they said that they really liked it so I think that if I can sit down and figure out a way to make it into a video that's not like just two minutes long, um, I definitely will. And I didn't realize this video was gonna turn into a compilation of me talking about how much I love to organize things on paper, but, but yeah, going back to number three is taking assignments one step at a time. Um, it can be really overwhelming when you look at your whole calendar for the week. I don't know if you guys feel this way too, but sometimes you just look at everything on this grand scheme and you're like, wow, that is so much that I have to do. How on earth am I going to accomplish all of it? And truth of the matter is you're not going to accomplish it if you just stare at it. You got to kind of take apart like what is highest priority, understand what you feel like is within your reasonable limitations to do every single day. Say like, I'm going to check five things off my list today or like two big things and three small ones or something like that where you feel like you're actually gauging your progress and success in a tangible way. Number four is to definitely, definitely connect with people in your class. If you haven't done this already, what are you doing? And I applaud you for being able to get through. I, I can't do it. Someone that I know in each one of my classes or else I struggle, I get really nervous about assignments and I feel like I'm just constantly comparing myself to like the best kid in the class, which is such an unrealistic standard. Having people to work with in your classes is a great way to just be at peace at the end of the semester. You know, you don't want to go into finals stressed out of your mind if you can help it. You just want to take things one week at a time, one day at a time to work with. But to build on this idea a little bit more so I'm not just one of those basic YouTubers, um, it really helps if you have, most professors are okay with it, definitely double check and just make sure that it's not violating the rules of that class. But usually if you have larger homework assignments or readings or something like that, assigning them across three or four different people and then meeting up together to like explain and talk to each other about the homework is a really good strategy for making sure that you all understand it. Um, also, being a specialist within like your own little area of knowledge might not seem super productive to some people, but trust me, I've tried this with a few friends and such in past classes. I even do it a lot of the time in my geology class now where we'll break up the lab assignments or the reading and we'll just call each other and explain how we did it and it is so so nice because it's like you're getting a mini lesson but you're helping a friend or yourself learn the material as well it's literally such a great method of studying if you haven't tried it before go ahead and try it I really recommend it and the last one is this is my fluffy piece of advice for the day I guess but the last thing that is really important to know is that you are not a machine you cannot do every physical thing in the universe at every single second and everyone knows that i'm saying it now as you're like watching this not being stressed in your room like on youtube and you're like yeah this girl's so dumb like duh obviously i can't do everything in the world like that's why i'm eating spicy doritos in my room like right once you're actually in the moment and you're actually stressed and you're actually trying to do 300 things at once this is when i want you to take that advice into account it's not realistic to look at a week ahead of you and say, I'm going to accomplish every single one of those things, especially if you set like 50 tasks for yourself. You know, what on earth are you supposed to do? You're not, there's usually not enough hours in the day to do everything if you are an ambitious person. That's just how it goes. Which is why I want you guys to keep this in mind too. Um, I'm giving this advice being a very busy person, um, but I've learned so much in the last year alone that it's so valuable to like take a second, understand who you are as a person, and understand what your limits are. Because I'm saying this like it's a drinking PSA video. Obviously, do not procrastinate, don't like maybe it's not the best idea to go watch a movie just to de-stress the night before a big exam but if it's an episode of something on Netflix where it's watching one of my YouTube videos perhaps hopefully maybe it is really good and important to know that self-care 
is one of the biggest pillars to success in college because if you end up driving yourself up into a wall but it's a matter of just like understanding what your body needs and responding to those cues like exhaustion and hunger and things like that that you just don't think of definitely self-care mental health care you know surround yourself with your support or friends during finals and honestly i am so open to talk to you guys if you have anything that you're stressing about in school right now or you want to just hit me up on instagram and vent like i'm here for you my instagram is at julia Weezio. just send me a message i'd be happy to talk um, so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart and i know you guys have got this you're gonna kill it spring semester 2019 is all yours and you have got this so i will see you guys in my next video if you enjoyed this one be sure that you like comment and subscribe to there goes infinity and i'll see y'all in my next video bye bye I let it burn, you call the fire brigade, but I feel that it will come back. Hold on, I want to get this this thumbnail. I I can't.